uh, unless you break down like, like overly break it, it down really, you know, if, if, uh, I, I really could pre preach probably like 50, 15 minutes out of this chapter after <laughs> I don't want to do that. And so I kind of broke it down into three sections and whatever the first two today, Lord willing. And the third, um, may take us a couple of weeks or we just do it all in all in one. It depends. But, but, uh, the first two sections here, or well, the, the three, the sections on James chapter five, five have to do with the, the early mind. Okay. The earth, the earth mind and actions, and then the heavenly mind, then the, and in the third section there, there we, uh, heavenly minded act action. Okay. And so, uh, I, and, and you can take this just for your, for your own info and I'll repeat it later. So if you don't get it all right now, you we'll get it later. Um, as you look through the, the book of James, again, and as mentioned, it's, it's the rich and the poor, the proud and, and the humble. Um, that's kind of the theme. And from this chapter, I kind of grabbed, uh, I did kind of, kind of an across. I know I've been talk, talking, talking guys doing the, the preaching class about, uh, about different, different ways to set up your, your sermon notes things. And I mentioned, mentioned alliteration wherever every, every point, point starts with the same letter. Uh, and I mentioned acrostic, which is where, like, like we did Wednesday night, the Baptist distinctives. And we talked about, about each one Baptists, you know, and each one. So, um, today I'm just giving you these points, points. they go along with, with it, I'm not, I'm, 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 the message is actually based on it. So, uh, the, uh, the word rich, if you write rich, rich, R I E H write, write down on a line. Uh, the first point being repentance is needed. Um, there is impending ding destruction. That's the I, the C there, there is corrupt business practices. And, and then H is uh, happiness is, is feigned or, or faked. Uh, and then for the poor, we have patience. We we have our Lord coming. Coming, then then we have uh, our pre precious fruit, and we have a res resolved heart. All right. So just there's your points, kind of. -ish. And, and so so as we do this, I'll I'll mention those again. But but I just kind of give you guys a little, a little bit of an idea of the kind of the flow of things and and how you can sometimes take little parts parts the passages and, and you can do a, a word that generally describes that section and then break down break down letter of that word as one of your points make sense amen all right, all right. what's or those were the word words yes sir and you you'll you'll cap you'll, you'll get you'll get them again here so uh <clears throat> james chapter five we're going to read verses one through eight and that will be today um and we'll deal with that. So go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for miseries that shall upon you. You riches are corrupted, and your garments are eaten. Your gold and silver anchored, and the rest of them shall be a witness again against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers. Who, who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, fraud crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord, Lord of Saoth. Ye, ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, earth and wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. have condemned them and killed and, uh, the just and, and not resist. resist then this and this is kind of the transition here. He, de he deals with rich, and now he's, he's dealing with the poor, or poor, poor in spit, or humble hum hum here. But be, uh, he says, "Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the for the precious fruit of the earth, earth, and, and have long patience for it, till he receive the early and latter rain. Rain. Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh." Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the privilege of opening it today. Lord, we pray that you'd just speak to our heart, to our heart today. Lord, help us to, to, to uh, I often say, help us to put out all the thoughts of, of, of the weed and and, uh, and all that. But Lord, I, I pray that whatever thoughts are necessary for, for the, the enhancement of application of Scripture, Lord, I pray that you'd keep them there. And Lord, and Lord uh, we, as we, th we think about our week, as we, th we think about our our day, day and that's going on in our lives. Lord, may we 
May we apply these passages of Scripture to those things. Or may we consider how it applies and, and Lord, what you'd have us to do as a result. Lord, we pray your blessing as, as we meet here this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. So we, as we, we consider chapter 5 of James, of course, I'm going to give you a quick review of the whole book again. Uh, and I do that each week so that you can remember. By the time we get done with the, done with the book, you have most of it mem memorized. And uh, it would be a whole lot easier if you had some, some nightming thing, thing or something like that. Maybe someday I'll come up with that uh, when I think ahead had to do that. But the, the, uh, the first chapter here of the book of James, James deal with trials within and trials, or rather trials, trials without within. And then we start dealing with our, with our action between other people. I, I did want to, actually, I, I forgot I wanted to do this since we're at the end of the book, to share with you an acrostic that actually goes through the, through the book so that you can, can uh, you can write down or not write down. Um, if you write it, dead it down and you miss some points, write it on, on a separate page from your notes from today and uh, you can come up with this book afterwards and look at it. Uh, this was as a, an acrostic parallel Bible, um, New Testament, uh, put together by Brother, brother uh uh, Dan Prillis, uh, uh, and uh, he does a real good job doing the acrostics here. I think. I think it's it's a, a parallel between English and Greek. So read Greek, you can read the Greek there, and so on. So the uh, but the across across there, he has the the word for the book, book or the the, the the title for the book. Book he has attempting try trials. Or, or rather, I'm sorry, that's the, cha the chapter. The title for the book, book he has truly Christian. Truly Christian. Um, and then the acrostic there for the whole book is the word, the word truly. So chapter one is T, chapter two is R, chapter three is three is chapter four is L, and chapter five is Y. All right? So then he breaks down each chapter into their own, own acrostic. Chapter one being the T, he has the word tempting, tempting there, tempting tri trial for chapter one. And then he's going to spell out the word tempting as an as an acrostic through chapter one. One, he's got uh, first first of all the twelve tribes. Then he's earnestly asking. Then uh, mentally double or double mind, right? Uh, pushing materialism. And then then uh, then the uh, the T there is testing reward. And then and then indisputable holiness. Then necessary imperatives and gossip bridles. is truly christian and then chapter chapter two is the letter r under truly christian and and the title that he, that he gives for that is renounced faith and then he's got respected persons so the word renounced is the the word that's being uh oh, i don't know how you how you uh, across this decided <laughs> if, if that's a, i just create, created it respected respected persons uh evil partiality not guiltless, guiltless, one offense, um, useless faith, uh, um, not saving faith, faith complete, complete faith, elect harlot, but there were, he talks about Rahab, uh, and dead faith. And then after three is the letter U, words be here truly, or I'm sorry, unruly tongue, but the word, the word that, that's, that the acrostic is being used for, for is the word tongue. So teachers warned, offending tongue, uh, needed combination, glory forbidden, ungodly wisdom, eternal wisdom. In chapter four, no, I'm moving through this pretty quick, so you'll have to, to look later. But chapter, chapter four here, uh, or watch the video and play it slow. Um, letter L there is lusting world, and then the word world is the, the acrostic, the, war, the wars first. There's the beginning of chapter four. Only choices, right, right, resist, lower selves, and uh, disappointing or disappointing clouds. And then the letter Y is the yelling rich. Um, and the word yelling there is it. So, so yelling judgment, enduring, uh, uh, serves, looking ahead, looking ahead, uh, lying oaths, inviting prayers, um, Noticing Elijah, go converting, and that's it. That's inter interesting acrostics, but um, 
it makes more sense if Sensei had it. I just wanted to read it, get it to you. So I'm going to put this out here so that later on, if you want to, we want to review of you and look at the, the, the acrostics or even, even write it in your Bible or something like that. It's kind of a neat, neat little way to remember for the chapters first flow, just to you th think about, oh yeah, you know, you know chapter three was this, this, you know, after five was, was this, you know, so that helps remember, but I'll give you what we already preached, right? So remember trials, trials with, or trials without, trials within, and interaction between other people are, are begins to be dealt with. Uh, and chapter two, we start dealing with in that interaction with other people. We need to have a um, an equal view of them and an equal uh, reaction to them or an equal action toward, toward them. So, uh, you know, like as we said, we said people, everybody sinned, everybody uh, deserves punishment, everybody, everybody, everybody has the opportunity to receive God's blessing. And so we don't treat people differently by their status in life, life, their you know, or, or what we think about them partic particularly, but rather we treat everybody the same. There's an equality that he there, how we treat pe people. We're on in chapter uh, two. He relates that that how we treat people to whether we have faith or whether or not we're displaying our faith and deal with the the uh, the justification of ourselves before man. And so again, we're as I mentioned before, we we don't believe this. We don't believe this is this is a salvation by works, but we believe it's teaching a salvation that that works. Um, ch chapter three, dealing with the teachers, dealing with the um, the tongue and how we we talk and you know what what we say to people and and uh, you know you know uh, you, you know you taking and and get a hold of that, that tongue and doing what and and using it the, the way that it ought to be used instead of, instead of saying. I know a lot of you you're like picturing and grabbing your tongue you know i don't know if that's what you got you got it's what you got to do you know hold your tongue don't let it say anything, anything right and, and and so uh the po point there and is 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 that the tongue can get you in a lot, lot of you know, you know your, your your speech speech can get you a ton of trouble and so uh we need to have the right wisdom we're going to touch on a lot of these as we go through ch chapter five because i remember back to a lot of the other chapters here so in, in chapter four remember uh, we dealt with a problem that, that we right. We talked talked about why we have problems, uh, and it's because of, of our lust. It's because, because of the, the pride that we have, we have uh, in ourselves and our own uh, selfish desires. Uh, um, and uh, <clears throat> then we talked about judgment, using proper judgment. Yes, sir. For Facebook, and forget it. Get it. Let's do YouTube and worry about Facebook. Facebook. All right, we had to had to. There's probably an update date that needs to have for the, the the soft somewhere there. All right, then let that that one win. If it messes up, then whatever. That's fine. All right, so uh, in chapter four, we're dealing with. Uh, we do, we deal with the problem, the root of the root of the problems and forth. And then we talked about judging and proper judging, not judging to try to put somebody else down, but judging rather to help someone. And so here, as he deals with, he's dealing with a, an improper view on judging. And he, and he talk, talks about, uh, you know, you know, how we, we ought to judge and try and try to destroy others and, and so on. Uh, but rather we are, are to, you know, work along with them and, and our judge should be only to, to help them lift them up and so on. So in cha in chapter the end of chapter chapter uh, four, sorry, we deal with you know how we make plant plants and uh, 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 doing the Lord's will. And you know again going back to the root of the problem again, all the way through the book. Remember we're dealing with the rich man. What what is common about the rich man? We're dealing with the rich man, rich man and the and, uh, and poor man. But the, a common problem with the rich man, which we're about to look at again here, is selfishness. And again, we're not just saying, saying that that has which is, is selfish. What we're saying is the, the problem, the, the rich man here, there was a little problem with rich people then. It was all about themselves. I find we're going to talk more about that today, but... Um, Today we look at it, at it more from perspective of, of a rich man. He also equates this man to to the one who is also proud. Okay, so um, 
so dealing with that or looking at it from that perspective, the rich, the rich is the one with the earthly mind, and 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 uh, and we'll we'll go back to to chapter and deal with that. But in chapter five, he says, "Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for the misery your miseries that shall come upon you." And so we 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 notice here he says says for them to weep and to howl, and that's that first point that I pointed out there out there on the letter R for rich rich. For, for the word rich is that they they have a need for repentance. Repentance is needed, and uh, and so, so this this weeping and howling, howling and miseries that are coming upon upon them. By the way, way the re repentance that they're going going to be preaching is a is a selfish, ungodly repentance. They're just going to be weeping and howling, not because because they wrong, but but because of their miseries. And so, anybody ever experience that kind of thing? actually ups, upset maybe you, you those of you that have kids you know know exactly what I'm what I'm talking about the kid kids are all repentant in some cases some cases they're repentant for the right reasons oftentimes Kim's kids are only repentant because they're getting in trouble for what they did yeah. right yeah. and so they're weeping and howling, howling because of miseries that they're bringing upon them on them with their uh with their ground grounding or their spank, spanking or their, you know this one thing that they've done wrong wrong you know that their punishment miseries that have come upon their weeping and howling because of the miseries you see that's the difference between the rich man and the poor man man or the proud man and the humble man the humble man is going to to and howl over the wrong wrong that he's the proud man or the rich man is going to weep and howl how be the miseries that his wrong has brought him and we're going to deal with you know you know how they they're okay Right. And every time I'm every time I look at this concept, it reminds me of the Laodiceans, how they they thought they were rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing. Right. And and God says you don't even real realize that just you're just just totally messed up. <laughs> you're you're poor and poor and, and blind and blind and naked and and there you're, you're just there's all kinds of problems here. Do you think you're okay? Hey, that's the problem with the rich man. And uh, and he's, he's he's earthly minded, and his mind is on, and his affections are on, and his 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 treasure is on the earth, and and so, verse number two says, "Your riches are corrupted, and garments are moth eaten." Um, I, I want to remind you though that, that uh, in verse number number chapter number one and verse number number eleven of the book of James, he says here, "The sun." Uh, let me let me go back to verse to verse ten. Actually, it says, "But the rich." Let me go back to verse number nine. Says, let the brother, brother of degree rejoice in that he is exalted, right? The humble one, the poor spirit, the one, the one who's the brother of low, of low degree. It says, let him rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that, that he is low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner, sooner risen with a burning, burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth. And grace of the fashion of it perishes, so shall the rich man fade away in his way. And so, and so again, he's telling him, weep and howl. That destruction's coming. The, the, um, there is letter I, impending punishment, impending uh, destruction. The miseries that are come upon him have to do with his own stuff, at least temporally. Miseries are going to are going to come upon him. They're going to have to do with do with the, the very thing that he loves, his money, his rich riches. It says, "Your riches are corrupted, and garments are moth eaten." That reminds me there, and we're going to we're going to uh, refer to to Luke chapter twelve a couple of couple of times. Um, actually, actually, chapter twelve here here. Uh, I want to go to that because not because of verse two, but because of verse verse one, just to further solidify here just the uh, the miseries that are going to come upon him. So if you turn over to Luke chapter 12, 12 <clears throat> it's difficult because when I just write the, the verse outside and then I don't pull a note as to what exactly it is, but I remember what it was as I looked, I looked at it. Luke chapter number 12. And by the way, this has to do here as well with verse number three, where it says you have heaped, heaped, Treasure together for for those days. Now, some uh, some commentators, as I've, I've read, read will say the last days he's talking about here is like end times. And I don't believe that's what he's talking about. I believe the last days is talking about talking about the last days of life. I think what, I think what he's talking about here is a, a, a concept of retirement. He's he's heaped to uh, um, 
uh, you know, you know, heaped treasure together together last days. You know, he's he's heaped up up this pile of money so so that he can spend time not working. And and uh, I understand that most of most Christians recognize that retirement from the secular world is really just the opportunity to do for the Lord, right? Lord, right? And so uh, when when we retire, it's not really reti retirement in the traditional sense where we just sit around and watch and watch be all day. It's retirement in a spiritual sense where we rest from our earthly labors and and spend more time on heavenly labors now of course of course uh we shouldn't wait until then to do that that is now what we've, we've done is we've been earthly minded for 20 30 40 years and now now for the last 10 years years we're going to give us left over we don't want to do that either either um but when I, when I talk about retirement i talk about about you know how i'm you know i, I, when I was younger i said i'm going to retire at 30 years old uh, it worked out too well, too well. Uh, but I said I was retired at 30 years, years old. And people said, what do you mean you're going to retire at 30 years old? You're crazy. crazy. I'm like, I don't mean quit working. I just mean quit working. No, I don't mean quit, quit, quitting my, my labor in the Lord. I just mean, mean quitting, you know, quitting the, the, the whole, like the, the rat race trying to, you know, work for money instead working for reward in heaven. And, and so, <clears throat> that's what I meant, meant by that. And I have my years spent a whole lot more time on the Lord's Lord's word, but um, um, but in in uh, Luke Luke chapter twelve, and I, and I I had the I, I started talking and lost my verse here, uh, verses 13, 13 through twenty one I believe is um, so so it's here uh, one of the comp company said unto him so you got somebody coming up to just and he said uh, speak to my brother that he divide the inherit inherit with me and he, he said unto him man who hath made me a judge or divide divider uh over you in other words he wasn't he, he wasn't there to try to to judge these matters of you know inheritance and things he he says uh um uh, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the of the things which, which he possesseth. See that the, he's trying to again, as Jesus did did often in his earthly ministry, he often pointed out that that your that your um, your life is not about the stuff you've got. He, he tried to point point it out, rich young ruler. He said, "Sell everything, give to the poor, and follow follow me." And he wouldn't. He wouldn't do it. Why? Because his life and the things he had, or his life was wrapped up in the things he had, and he thought that without things he had, he couldn't couldn't live, couldn't live, and couldn't do what he was supposed, supposed to do, and, and so so on. Um, by, by the way, we get as even as saved saved, but we often get caught up in that trap that life's about having, having stuff, having, having the things that we need and need, and and uh, we're, we'll, we'll get there and we'll talk about it about it, but. This is what happened here. This, this, written. he's going to give a pair of parable. It says, and, a, and he spake make a parable, verse 16, unto them, say, saying, Ground of a, of a certain ring brought forth plentifully. <clears throat> and, he, and he thought within himself, self, saying, what Shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow, bestow of my roots. And he said, This will, will I do. I will pull down, down my bars and build greater. And, and there will I bestow all my roots and my, my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, <laughs> thou hast much goods laid up for thee or, or for many years. Years, Take the ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. In other words, I'm re retiring. I'm going to kick back. <clears throat> I need a little foot footstool here. I'm going to kick back and I'm going to relax. And it's going to be all about, about me and... I'm just, just, I'm not going to do anything because I've worked hard enough. I've served, served hard enough. I did, I, I did my part and I'm good to go. That is a, a fish and fish concept. <clears throat> yes, he may have worked hard, hard. We don't know though, though, because it doesn't say. But he didn't get to enjoy it. Thy soul. Thy soul. Shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. 
Notice that he, he doesn't say here that it's not, that it's, that it's wrong for you, for you to have something of your own. He's not saying that. He's saying that if you're not rich, rich toward God, but it's all about me, all about self, something's wrong. Something's not right. Right. And by the way, this is, this is what your mentality becomes. It becomes a mentality that's going to use other, other people to get what you want. want. The wrong mentality. It ought, it ought to be, how can I, like the police officer said to my wife earlier this week, when, or, or this week when she got pulled over-ish. It, she, didn't get, she didn't get over, she was broke, broke down. And the police officer came up and he said, how can I, can I best serve you today? Hmm. Most people think police officer, police officer going to come up and say, get, get your car off the road. What's wrong with you? With you? No, he went to the gas station and bought antifreeze himself, put it in the car, and tried to do what he could, could to get her off the road and save and got her what she needed and what? And gave water and uh, said, have a nice day. She's like, she's like how much, much was it? What do, I, what do I owe you? And he's like, nothing at all. Have a nice day. That was a good example of somebody, somebody serving instead of, of instead of just themselves and for profit, they were helping others. I think it was, it was specifically because we have veteran license plates. So he's a military veteran and saw veteran license plates and since uh, help out another veteran. But uh, still yet, it was a selfless service. You know, um, I'm I'm actually uh, for for um, our military outreach program. Um, for the, the army side with GR, our, our uh, uh, monthly poll services are going through army values. And we're, we're talking about what the Bible, the Bible has to say about those values. And one of the values of the army values is selfless service. And so it's the exact, exact opposite of what these, these, these men that are mentioned here are doing. It's the exact opposite. But in, uh, in, in verse number two, it says, uh, as, as I read, your rich, riches are erupted and your garments are mothy. And that reminded me, by the way, of a few chapter number six uh, uh, there. And, and uh, remember when Jesus said, lay not up for, you, for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Let's see here. Um, I'm kind of quoting, kind of sort of. Um, He's verse number 19, lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal and steal. I, right, wow. He said in verse number 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, heaven where neither moth nor rust doth, doth corrupt <clears throat> and, and thieves do not break through nor steal. I was, I was called earlier this week to, to, um, to uh, uh, well, last week, I guess it was uh, Friday, day, I think, or Thursday. Uh, um, out, uh, uh, a, a distant family member had uh, a, a family member on, there on, on, the, on the other side of the family, uh, um, so not technically related to me, passed away, and they want, want me to help with the funeral. And, and my initial full thought, and I, this is this is my passion of sin here. My initial thought, initial thought, man, next week's going to be busy. I got work to do. You got to, you know, I got to plan my schedule, my work schedule, and all that. And all that. Hopefully, they don't plan the funeral. On at, at a time supposed to be to be doing a claim or something, something. and so, so I initially thought <clears throat> about me when I shouldn't. Now I was I was thinking about I wanted to help help them, but I didn't interrupt my schedule to do it. And so I would tell them, you know, well, this day's not good, that day's day's not good. How do you tell somebody that just had a, had a family member pass away, away that certain days not good for them to have the funeral because you because you've got work. And you do their funeral girl because you got to, that's pretty selfish, isn't it? I didn't say any of that, by the way. I just, I thought about it at first. But then when I was talking to uh, the young lady, I said, I uh, um, said, I'll tell you what, what, just let me know when it is and off my schedule, schedule around. And then I thought, and I thought to myself, I thought, well, that may actually end up meaning that I lose a claim because I have to have to do this. And for me, a claim, claim is about four to $600. So I'm going to go and do a few <clears throat> that's going to potentially, I was willing at that point, because the Lord dealt with my heart, I was willing at that point to give up four, four to six dollars to go help a family in their time of need. 
Now, that's not me saying, hey, look at me. This is how you do it. Because my heart was wrong in the first place. And then God, God fixed it by the time I talked to her. Because I, I told her brother, I said, man, I've got a lot of stuff going on next, next week. Hopefully, you guys just can work out the schedule and all this. And then after I got off the phone with him, before I called her, the Lord was just beating on, on me saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, wrong, you're wrong. Just tell them that that it just went, whenever, whenever they work it out. And it just, just ended up working out to where they scheduled it. It's tomorrow, it's tomorrow, and I don't have any claims scheduled for tomorrow. So, so it worked out. So, so it's not going to cost me anything, but I should I should be willing to lay out treasures in heaven instead of treasures on earth. What's a, what's a, what's a thousand bucks? What's 400 bucks? What's, what's, that's nothing, nothing. It's worth nothing at all compared to potentially maybe one soul getting saved Amen. because they're faced with death and they get, they get to the gospel. Right. It's nothing com compared to that. It's nothing compared to maybe just one, one soul uh, that, that was saved, that, that God gave them a, a very, a, a very uh, real, real illustration of the shortness of life. And now they're given, given the opportunity to, to repent and, and spend the rest of life serving him. There's nothing, there's no dollar value you, you can put on that. I don't care if, if somebody said, oh, hey, I got a claim. It's take you six, six hours. It's Monday afternoon. And we're going to pay you, you $1.5 million for it. It doesn't matter. Call them up and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was off a job. I had to, had to take. I'm not able to do the funeral. No. We shouldn't be, shouldn't be laying up selves treasures on earth. But treasures heaven. You see, the, the mentality of the rich, rich man is a selfish mentality. <clears throat> and the these riches that are here, here are, are corrupt riches. As he says here, your riches are corrupt and your garments are moth eaten. And then he goes even further and he says, Your, your gold and silver cankered, cankered. And, and the rust of them shall be, shall be a witness against you. you. I think, I think it's great. I probably, probably the James was in there when Jesus said what he said and he was taking notes. Right? right? And then now we know that Matthew was after the book of James was written, but I don't believe that Matthew looked at James's book and, and took notes. I think they were both taking notes when Jesus was, was talking. And then he remembers, he's dealing with this issue. He's talking to the 12, 12, 12 scattered abroad, abroad. And he's dealing with these issues that these these rich people who are who are, are defrauding other people and wronging other people, and he, he's that's that's completely wrong. That's selfishness. He, as Jesus said, lay not uh, up treasure on earth, right, where moth and rust doth corrupt. And he's again he's, he's dealing with uh, you know the 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 purse of wealth is is not me. Right and and prophet says there is is that scattereth of the broad, yet tendeth to I, I'm I'm kind of paraphrasing here yet tendeth to abundance since, right, and there is that it withholdeth more more meat, and tendeth tend the poverty. You, you see the concept here is is that uh, as 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 there's lots of that the way all through the Bible it says is give and it shall be given unto you and he's not just talking about giving giving offering. He's talking about giving to people, people giving needs. And again, guys that I, I always have to give the balance, right? Because there's always somebody on the, on the corner asked for money. But we've got to give the balance, right? Giving isn't always helping. Sometimes it's actually hurting someone to give something to them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's giving time. But, but you know what? Sometimes giving is helping. You just have to weigh it out, out and you have to determine, you know, what, what it is. And, and and sometimes you've got you've got to give not what they think they think they need, but they do really need. And and so, you know, you, you balance balance that still that though, if your attitude, right? What's what's the Bible say? The liberal liberal soul, and he's not talking about, about politically liberal, he's talking, he's talking about liberal with your stuff. Liberal soul soul shall be made fat. That's a amen, amen. good <laughs> in other words. You do give, you spread your stuff out and share and take care of other people's needs and help other pe people. You make other people successful, as we talk about in our financial freedom class at the mission. And you, the more that you focus on, on other people's good, good, as he tells us, in, tells us in different epistles, the word of God, you know, look at every man upon his own wealth, but every man upon the wealth of another. 
you know, his, his, his own things, but, but another's, you know, you're, you're, you're looking for the best interest of another. And as you do that, what happens? He said, given it shall be given unto you. Uh, he says, shall men give it? And I'm just kind of, I didn't write and write this for that, but, uh, it says that men will give unto you so much I'm paraphrasing it here and here. He says, it'll be pressed down, shaken together and running over more than you can handle. Because your attitude is not about keeping, it's about dispersing. Your attitude, instead of your attitude being about what I can get out of this and how it benefits me, instead it's about how I make it benefit others. And, uh, and so, again, I, you know, I honestly, I hate, hate preaching about money, especially as a, as a pastor. I don't want to tell, tell people, you know, I don't want to be always put more money in the offering or we need to, we need to get, you know, we, there's this big, big missions need or we're starting a building fund and, and then all this kind of stuff. I don't want to be a pastor. That's a, it's about me. By the, by the way, I give so much of what, what we have because I don't want to be about, don't want to, don't want it to be uh, perceived or actually the case where, where what we're, what we're doing is about gaining in the worldly sense I want it to be about gain in a godly sense and godly with contentment and his great gain and, and and so what you know we're often broke even we may make a bunch of much money doing this that we do we're often broke and that's on purpose sometimes other times times it's like how get here and sometimes like we, we should we shouldn't have spent money on that or that other times times i don't even tell my wife but i gave some of it away not do tell her, but but times she's like, where'd all, where'd all the money go? Well, I gave you know, you know a couple hundred to this, this need over here in the minute in the ministry, or this thing thing needed to happen needed to happen. I don't share time that you know that, you know we have the money from the on the offering to pay bills. I just do do us pay the bills, and she's like, well, we have money for me for this, and I'm like, well, it's gone. <laughs> pay the bill, praise the Lord. It's, it's it's gone, but but that's the concept, right? God takes care of us. You can tell I'm not starving. I weigh more today than I've weighed in my entire life. <laughs> they weighed me at drill yesterday. And I looked at that scale and I saw. And I said, "You liar! You liar!" <laughs> it was after lunch. Two hundred and thirty-eight point six pounds. Man, yeah, it was after. It was after I shaved. <laughs> Should have lost at least point six pounds. <laughs> Those boots are pretty heavy, though. So I really only weigh, only weigh, I weighed myself when I got home, took the uniform off, and, I, and I, I'm 232. But still, still, that's more than I've ever weighed. Some of you are saying, man, that's nothing. Some of you are saying, man, Pastor, you're fat. <laughs> See? <laughs> the Lord takes care of me. Amen? And, and uh, you know, and, and I, 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 wor I worry sometimes, I stress our kids out about finances sometimes because I'm like, they're like, we need to get this. We need to get that. I'm like, we're broke. We can't get, can't get that. Like, what are you talking about? about? Yeah, we just don't. I'm, I'm like, well, you know, we got, we've done a lot of work, work for, for people. They owe us, you know, you know, like, like claims and, and stuff that are running up. You know, I'll have, playing, you know, it'll be six thousand, ten thousand, dozen dollars one year. I had had fifty thousand dollars of billing that was sitting there that I hadn't been paid, and it was like, I mean, I was getting paid, but but there was that much that was owed to me, and you know, you know what happened when I came in. Painted the building. <laughs> we started doing other work. Work. We 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 uh, got a new bus and put tires on it and put did the brakes. And guess what? The next next month, I didn't know how the bills were going to be paid. Like like I had a whole a whole bunch of money. What happened? And I look back and like, well, love it happened. Praise praise the Lord. Lord, I need help. Help. And guess what? He helped us out. That was a few years ago. And remember how he helped helped us. Out. But he did. We're, we're still here. We're, we're, we're on the street. He took care of us. <laughs> uh, and if we're on the street, we'd pray, praise him and we'd keep on serving. So the, the, the rich man's mentality is the, the wrong. Again, we, you keep going back, back. We have to going back to the rich man's mentality is all, all about gather, gathering and king. And it's all about me, 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 me. It's mine. I, I'm so he's not, not going to say I'm selfish, but he's going to say, you know, what can I get out of this, right? Any kind of deal that's going to be made or done. Uh, if you're going to write a contract, the contract's going to be going to be specifically, specifically either it's either, either the person's not even uh, concerned about uh, uh, fulfilling terms of the contract 
or all the terms are written to benefit that person. That's the way the, the rich, rich man thinks. What can I get? How can I gain from this? How can I, uh, you know, get, get more and enrich, enrich myself more? And so, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that in general, everybody that's wealthy thinks, thinks this way. Well, God takes, takes care of us. I think we mentioned on, uh, you, know, you know, we have, have, you know, we're spoiled. My family's spoiled. We're well, take, well taken care of. But it's not because we hoard. It's just because the Lord blesses us. He takes care of us. There's often times, times things that should have cost a ton of money, and it was like either free or, or cheap. And I don't know how in the world it had happened. It just happened. And I'm like, praise the Lord, you know. And uh, well, well, don't don't have that expense. Don't have to be worried about it anymore. So we'll give Southern need, or we'll take care of that, or take care of this. And so the the mentality, uh, uh, the mentality buddy, that because you are wealthy, you're doing well. The wrong mentality, the, and the mentality of I'm I'm going to do what it takes to get ahead in this in this world is is the wrong mentality. You need to do what do what it takes to, you know, more to to let's see, you know, do what it takes to make more neighbors, right? right. We want to do what it takes takes to have more neighbors when we get to heaven. When we get our our, our our mansions in heaven. We want to have more neighbors. We we'll have more more people around us, right? And we want our we want our life today to be, to be more about that than it, than it is about what we get today. And, uh, sometimes that's diff difficult, but we've got to we've got to recognize this that that the wealth of, wealth of this earth come, comes to an end very fast, and it doesn't matter, matter how much you hate to yourself. Um, I'm telling you this: if you spent your life life heaping whether that you could give them give them to your kids, you will ruin you and your children. Absolutely ruin your children. They won't care about heavenly things. They'll care about the inheritance you're for them when you croak. In fact, they may even tell you when you're going to or give me, give me my inheritance now or have some, you know, I want this. I want, I want that, I want this. And their, and their whole mentality will become completely selfish. And so the whole purpose for which you lay, you lay to try to get something, something nice is destroyed because when they have what's nice, they don't appreciate it and they get it and they destroy it. Then when you're, then when you're gone, and you're, you're reminded, heaven, that you wasted your entire liar life on stupid tem temporal things. You regret not, not fo focusing on more important riches, the riches in glory. And so rich, because of their selfishness, are going to be corrupt in their business dealings. Uh, that's their C there, corrupt. In their their business, uh, in their business to steal. In verse number four, it says, "Behold, the high high of the laborer of reap down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and are entered into the ear ear of the Lord of." Both. By the way, they they ought to be trembling over that. You, know, you all know what the word the 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 phrase there there the Lord of Sabaoth means. At first, I kind of thought, kind of thought it was like having to do with like like the, the Lord Sabbath, but Sabbath doesn't mean Sabbath. It has to do with do with. In fact, in the Old Testament, the term is used, Lord of Hosts. And uh, and I remember, remember sitting on, on the porch um, at uh, the cor corner of uh, Burgess and Legrand, and uh, sitting on the porch with with uh, Hispanic guys and and Brother Delp. Uh, guy from our church uh, back then at that day, we, we were we had a little like Thursday night church service at their house, and it was all in Spanish. And it was uh, he he reaching along, and he, and he was he was reading another passage uh, in the Old Testament, and in, in the Spanish it said, and this was a direct translation from, from Spanish to English: the God of, of the armies, the Lord of hosts, the host hosts there are the hosts of, of armies. And like armies, right? right? He's the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of Seoth. He's the God of armies, the God of war. But not just not just war. Vengeance, not just vengeance, vengeance. And he's not not just alone. He's the one that rules all of all of them. And the retribution here. This is, this is an amazing thing, thing 
is about all through the Bible. And we talked about God's long, long offering and, and, and about his mercy see, last week and, and things in our Sunday school lessons. And if you think about all, all through the Bible, when those who were defrauded cried to the Lord, the Lord often, often they, instead of trying to make it, make it their own way or, or about their own justice or bring about their own vengeance, they cried to the Lord. What did God do? He made it real bad for the guy on the other side of that. Right? Think of Gideon. It wasn't about Gideon. Gideon, Gideon was the judge that God chose. And they whooped Midian. I mean, the numbers were against, were against big, big time. And they absolutely wiped them out. Uh, uh, 450 to, to 1. Every one Israelite soldier faced 450 Midianites. And they whooped them, literally whooped them all over the countryside. Chased them. I mean, took out the first whole bunch. I can't remember the number, but a whole bunch. And then it was 50 to 1 odds. And they faced, it was like one guy chasing 50 all over the place. Like all night long and all and all next day. And then they finally caught him and wiped, and wiped him out. Yeah. But how does something like that ha happen? Because the Israelites were being oppressed. They were being oppressed. They are being defrauded. They would, they, they would do their, their work. They would plant the seed. They, they, would, uh, they would weed their, their, their fields. They would, they would take care of the fields, make sure that it was getting watered and all that. And then when they would, they would reap their fields, they'd have to hide to be able to keep the fruits of their labors because as the Midianites were, were def defrauding them and ta taking it from them. Remember, remember, Gideon was found hiding while he was fishing the wheat. He was hiding. hiding. Why? Because of the fraud of the Midianites. He was, he was, he was, he was going to be st stolen from. God said, enough's enough. enough. And, when, and when, when Gideon got a large army together, that's too many. I don't want you to, you to think you did it. I want you to know I did it, did it. And so the Lord of Sabaoth in that day hey, showed him who was boss. He, when the, when the uh, Sears rose, rose up against uh, Israel and, and you had, um, I was just actually in my devotions this morning. We had, we had um, uh, it was Hezekiah and, and the Syrians and Sennacherib. He's standing on the other, the other side of the wall cussing him and, and same kinds of bad, bad stuff. But I mean, literally, you know, you know, you, there you see it. He's, he's over there talking bad. And he's talking and trying stuff about 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 God's people and and God's armies and and God Himself. He's saying, "Where you know, where's your God? God, your God, you know, where, you know, where are the God's country and that country and that group? What about what about what about Northern Israel, right? And that you know the 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 uh, the North Kingdom. They failed to us. They fell to us. And you're gonna fall. Falls the same. And don't let Hezekiah tell you he's talking to the men of." Of Jerusalem, he says, don't, don't let Hezekiah tell you that your God's going to save you because he couldn't save the Israelites and he said he's going to save you. Hezekiah said, Lord, you see what he said? And when he sent when they sent a letter to that effect, he, he put the letter out before the altar and he said, Lord, you see it. He's talking about you. What, what are we going to hear? What's, what's going to happen? The Bible says, that, says they woke up the next day all dead corpses. <laughs> The Lord of Sabbath, Sabaoth, how to bring vengeance against those that are selfish and that that different. And he and he says here, rich man, your time's come. Again, as the first point was, repentance is needed. Repentance is needed, not just and and God's not asking for people for people of having having stuff. He's asking them to repent of the selfish, greedy attitude that they have. And the attitude that causes them to be, uh, to, to be heaping to, them, to themselves at the expense of other people. And he goes on and he, and he says, this, how you, this is what, what your attitude is. And this is how you, you've lived. You have, have a happiness that is fain. fain. That's the point of the, the rich side here. You, you have a happiness that's fain. And by the, by the way, the, the poor should go a lot faster, faster. You have a happiness that's, that's fain. He's, 
you have you have lived in pleasure on the earth. The earth. By the way, by the way, that pleasure feigned pleasure. It's fake. You know, it only lasts as long as money does. Does it lasts, as you said in, in Sunday school. It only lasts as long as long as booze lasts, and then you have the hangover. It only, it only lasts as long as the drug lasts, and then you've got the the, the coming down off, down off of it. You withdrawals. You got all the little problems, and it it only lasts as long as long as the the pleasure of sin for a very short season, and then you reap the reward of sowing to the flesh. He says, "Have lived in pleasure on the earth, the earth, and wanton." I was like, "Wanton is that's like a ch Chinese, isn't it?" And, and I, I looked it up, and and certainly it isn't actually. It has to do with uh, uh, extravagance and and uh, uh, consumerism and and, uh, and just just getting all you want. You want, you know, it's, it's uh, having to do with, uh, um, uh, consuming and wandering from place to place, place to get. Lustfulness, just I gotta have, I have, I gotta have that, that I have that. Kind of has to do with it. Kind of reminds me of like you know somebody going, going on a wedding spree. You know, it's like this is my mine, and this is mine, and this is my mine, and mine, and this mine, and that is my mine, and that is. My. Um, don't misunderstand. I understand, ladies, you're going to be going to Goodwill here in a couple weeks. And, um, it's half price, half price, nice cheap, all used stuff. Praise the Lord for that. Um, praise the Lord. He gave. And you good deal, um, but if the mentality is just all is, is just again to as verse as chapter four says, what, what did chapter four to four tell? When they pray, they don't they don't leave. Why? Because they they ask this that they they may consider on their own lusts. In in chapter um, chapter three verse verse five, this worldly mind. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 15, it says this wisdom, this wisdom that has bitter envy and being strife in their hearts and they're 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 uh, they're glorying and they're lying, lying against the truth. He tells them to, to glory not not against the truth. This is talking about those that, that use their words in the wrong, wrong way to curse their brethren or to cur curse uh, other men around them. Right. And and uh, this wisdom, it says, descend endeth not above, but is er earthly, sensual, devilish. It's the kind of wisdom, that the kind of mindset they have. <clears throat> and, I'm, and I'm saying this to say that we should, if you're, if you're named by Christ today, if you're again, if you name, you name the name of Christ, your concept of life should not be flesh. It should not be like, be like rich men. By the way, he's referring here to the lost people in the world, lost Jews specifically, who were rich because they defrauded right. their been. Because they, they, because they, because they, they, they where they didn't deserve, and instead of giving, they, they took and consumed it on it on their own lust, lived in pleasure on the earth. It says, "Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter." By the way, that doesn't mean like, like, yeah, that that, that you know, how you like fatten up and up a cow or something before you kill it. They're they're like it's it's like running to them to the food on the day of slaughter when they're getting fattened up so they can be butchered. And it's and they know does the cow is the cow really thinking about man look at all this food I'm gonna I'm gonna get all this food and they're gonna kill me no the cow's just like whoo, whoo, whoo. and it's going to the food right it's just nourishing his heart with no thought of death that's about to come come that's what that's the way they think. You see, for the rich man, man, everything is about how much I can get and enjoy while I'm alive today. It doesn't matter that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna eat this meal and I'm gonna die, die tomorrow because I'm because my I'm fine, finally I'm being rewarded for my, my wickedness all soul life. It's not not about they're they're not th thinking about what's gonna happen after death. God forbid that, that any Christian would, would have that kind of mindset that everything I'm going to do is who is about to and about this thing, thing and thing. There were probably, I want to say there were, say there were four this week. Where I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to boast and brag, but there were four days this week where um, I don't know, I think I had a meal or two on those days. And it wasn't because my wife wasn't feeding. feeding. Often it was because I had to, it was like, oh, there's this ministry here or I need to meet with the other brother uh, pastor uh 
tw- tw- you know, Tuesday and Thursday. So Tuesday and Thursday up. Monday was it was this, the the buzzing and all the, all this and so there was a lot of fasting this week un- unintentionally and I'm still fat <laughs> but sometimes that ha- happens right yeah, yeah. because sometimes you have to put the need, needs of others yourself and some of you are think, thinking that you're trying to do to do to us right now pastor it's it's twelve thirty and, and none of us have eaten lunch yet yet <laughs> we got pizza in the back all right all right it's cooked yet you'd have you'd have to heat it but. When our mind says it's all about how I feel about this, about this, and what I want, and what you know, we've we've got to get, we've got to stop being not being so shorted. That's the problem with rich people. That's the, that's the problem with rich Americans. By the way, I mean you, every one of you. And don't tell me you're living in a homeless shelter, so you're not rich. You are richer. Than probably eight to ninety percent cent of the world, even out owning anything, yeah. because you get fed every day, more than once. You are richer, and and I, I'm, I'm talking. You know, my kids might might say, you know, you know, sometimes we wait for food because we're busy with this with this or whatever. Like we take off to do claims and stuff, and I'm like, we have to stop. Somebody's got to you got to use the bathroom. Often it's me. Uh, we have to stop. Well, and then it's like, we don't have time. They're like, can we get something? something? No, nope, we don't have to get back in the car. We got to go, go. Right. And then when we get done and, you know, sometimes it's pushed, you know, our, you know, our schedule gets pushed because of, you know, we're serving other people and, and this happens and that happens. And sometimes it's, you know, we, we, we're, we're reminded, you know, life's not about me. And I have it good. Even when I think I'm having it, having it I really do. I really do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But then the poor American, by the way, I believe this is why America, America's days are numbered. Even the poor in America have the same mindset as the rich that he's, he's talking about here in, in James. They're, they're just, just selfish, just, just as I think about, I, I already mentioned it before, about the, the bus ride stuff this week. These kids, I, I thought, thought for just a moment, I got, you know, I'm, 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 Lord help me. I, I, uh, I said, I said, said to myself, as we were on our back, I'm like, like these kids, it's, camp was $8,000 just to have the place, plus food. Plus, the transportation transportation thing. Then we've got multiple churches donating their own their own vehicle, their own time, and their own their own fuel on top top of it. And we're charging these kids twenty five dollars. That's it. And if they can't afford the twenty five five dollars, we say don't worry about it. To, to go to camp. And some some of them think that they're owed owed everything. One of them, I I I, had, I told one of them on the way on the way back. I said, look. Nobody's paying me to drive this bus. You didn't pay for this ride. So quit complaining about how hot it is in the bus. I said, I'm, I'm sweating too. I had a paper, paper towel about my forehead because it kept going down in my eyes. I said, it, it, it's hot up here. I'm driving. Sun's on me. Like, 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 can't you get some, get some conditioning? Hey. I said, I'll tell you what, you guys donate for it, we'll buy another bus. bus. Or we'll get an air conditioning unit and, and attach, attach it. I said, but the fact is, you know, and I and I and I tried, I was like, man, having a bus is an absolute miracle <laughs> for us, right? Right? Just somebody laid it on somebody's heart to give us that bus and they get and they get to us, brakes were locked up. It was sixteen hundred dollars just for the brake parts. It's like I'm not complaining about. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying that, that like, how I provided that. That's a huge blessing. And, and the kids that are like, are like, this bus is too too small. This bus bus is too. And think about who who was who was you were involved in helping uh, uh, pick out the, the the seats of or put seats in and get the seats out of the old bus. bus all that stuff, man. That was blood, sweat, and tears. Like really, literally. That that bus has bus has a lot of blood and tears in it. And, and painting. I mean, even, even though it looks a big oversized tootsie roll driving down the road, down the road, it's 
So we think about all that went into that, and then then you got those that those those quote unquote poor people that are rich in heart, in heart and really also in goods. You find you find that uh, oftentimes it's the the ones who get things things get to them treat things like 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 garbage, right? And, I, and I'm not just trying to pick on poor poor people, so speak. But it, it's the what is that word that we're, that we're talking? You, the, it's the the uh, the um, ones who are entitled. Yes, it's the entitled entitlement concept. And by the way, the way that goes for, for I think I think majority of Americans we're we're entitled to we're entitled to things our way, way, right? Oh, I'm entitled to a good home to live in. I'm entitled to a good car. Car entitled to a good meal i'm entitled to, entitled to good clothes and i'm entitled to you know everything i'm entitled to all my my entitlements and i'm entitled entitled to you treat me like me like i think you treat me and i'm entitled to you know short church service and i'm entitled to this i'm entitled to that to that and whatever it is or i'm entitled, I'm entitled to preach on. i'm not doing it on purpose i, I assure you that do that all right so poor poor oh number six you have condemned and killed the just and he does not resist you. So it's like, man, we stop at nothing, nothing but what we want, right? It's like those end times movies and things that you see. We, we, we've filtered and watched one last night. It was about something, some crazy disaster disa happened, and it was a fictional thing, I think. But everybody's like willing to kill somebody, somebody something that they think they need. What is wrong with these people? Oh, it's just survival of the fittest. No. It's stupid. Yeah. Anyways, and of course, there's, you know, protecting your family and things like that. I, I understand that. Still yet. Please get the mentality of the rich, of the rich as described in the, in the book games. Don't be self selfish. But rather be patient. You see, our riches aren't here. Now we may be given lots of resources here. Here, to use for the Lord. We've been given lots, lots of resources here to, to to spread around and use to to reach more, reach more people to do more things. Right, right. That's why we foundations ministries. Right, to raise funds and resources and things to be able to be able to do more to reach more people and and all that. It's it's none of to to. Per, to per to purely benefit or profit off any person, it's just to reach the law lost, right? We have a feeding ministry, and what what happens? We give people food, and they're they're fed. But it's not it's not for that person. It's so that we can we can let treasure in heaven. We you know we you know we we found people willing to give to give food, so we can give it to, to somebody else, so that we can give them give them the gospel, so that we can lay up treasure in heaven, and so that we have friends and neighbors in the New Jerusalem, right? Uh, we 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 do that in patience. You see, patience here. He's not just talking about enduring the the fraud of the, of the wicked, although he is. He's also talking about rec recognizing that we have have to wait. In fact, he says it twice in in these two verses, verses seven and eight. He says it twice. He, he says, "Be patient. Be also patient. Patient." You think we'd get the point point the first time? But the idea here is our treasure is beyond where that rain's coming from. Our treasure, don't try to take distractions. Our treasure is in, and we've got to wait, wait for it. But what? We'll be enjoying it a whole lot longer than we're waiting for it. Our, our treasure isn't on this earth. And so we can be patient because what we have coming is much greater than what we could ever have here. He says, be patient, brethren. And by the way, the biggest treasure that we're going to get. And, and, so, and so letter P for poor is patience. Okay. Um, letter O there, the greatest treasure could ever want, desire, will have when our Lord's. Um, and that's the first letter O, our Lord's coming. He says, be patient, therefore, brethren, and un unbecoming of the of the Lord. And then he remind, reminds us again of eight, for the Lord is coming. 
or for the for the for the coming or draweth nigh. nigh. Right? right? The greatest treasure we could ever have is, is not stuff, but a person. And that's our Lord, our Lord. Someday we're going to be with him. Someday we're going to, either, either we're going to take off out of this, this body, or the body's going to take off <laughs> with, us, with us and be changed. It says to meet him in the clouds. And it says that we'll ever be with him. Wow, what a, what a treasure. Wow. By the way, we fit from being poor to be rich then. Although we, though we are in America, we're, we're rich no matter what you, what you think. We're rich. You know, stuff. You're needing care of. But our Lord is going to be coming. And he's going to be... He's gonna he's gonna be our treasure. The second letter O is is the pre fruit, right? He he goes on to say, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, and to receive. They're in the latter rain. The early rain is early rain rain after the plant planting season. The latter rain is the rain that comes shortly before the harvest season. Okay. In other words, there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of seasons in a sense, although we just call it summer. There's a couple, a couple of seas that you have to endure un, until the harvest, right? Whether we're, ta we're talking about, of course, the, the symbol here is we're talking about the husbandman and the, the fruit of the ground and fruit of the earth and things. But still yet, yet the same, the symbol here is the, the Lord's coming. There's come, coming of us, right? There's a harvest from the in the earth. First, there's we, that's a whole other message, like multiple messages on the harvests. There's a har harvest. The, of course, there's, there's going to be harvest of the the lost at the end of the tribulation. There's a har harvest of the saved before the tribulation. And, and anyway, there's there's a there's a harvest coming. And by the way, the way there's also a har harvest in a sense of one fruit fruit when one and one is the seed seed planted. And Brother Jim, I got his empty seat seat here, was, was harvested a couple weeks ago. And he was the precious fruit of the labor of God. Amen. And now God enjoys the harvest of the sweet fellowship with Brother Jim. Jim and Brother Jim enjoys the greatest treasure, uh, the, the greatest treasure ever, ever fellowship with the, with the Lord. It's pretty neat. Precious, precious fruit of the harvest. And uh, then letter R. I'm sorry. Yes, R. Uh, is this the resolve. He says here, here in verse number eight, be also patient. Another remind, remind again, be patient. It says, it says establish your hearts. Y'all know what it means. What it means establish your, your heart. Let me think and again. Say establish. That's what we use today. Establish hearts is to settle or settle your heart in place. In other, in other words, settle on the right. Settle your your heart where it belongs. Right? There's verses that I didn't go to. I had them written out here. Here, settle your your heart where it belongs. You see, I believe it was Solomon that said, if "Riches increased, set your heart not upon them." Said another, 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 they make wings like, they take up wings, wings like an or something, you know, and riches, riches that fly away, right? Or what do we do? What do we do when we consume it upon our own lusts and we, and we, and we forget God and we don't bless, you know, we don't, as, as he said to the Israelite from Malachi, the guy that they've robbed them and they haven't, they haven't tithed and, and they, or they robbed them and robbed them in tithes and offerings. Uh, what did he say? He, he cut a whole bag. <laughs> what happened? It just kept on going, you know. You you, you it doesn't matter how much how much you bag when there's a hole in the bottom. It just, it just going. It's all good. All good. It's probably just calibrating. Ah, uh, so so. Anyways, settle your heart, or as as the the point to resolve your your heart. Be resolved that your heart's heart's gonna set on the writings. 
that of course reminds you of Colossians chapter 3. Of course, of course, all of you are thinking of Colossians chapter 3, right? If you then be risen, be risen, set your action on things above and not on, on things on the earth. So we're going to, those of us that are going, going to war in spirit or humble, humble, truly, truly humble, be, you know, not just proud of our humility, but really, truly humble, lowly. We're going to be patient. Recognize our Lord is coming. Recognize that our precious fruit of our labors is there and his precious fruit of, our, of the labors is, is us. And resolve our hearts to be set on the right things. Set on the right, right timeline. You see, often get, get so stuck, like, here's the timeline of me. We'll do that. We'll, we'll just this is my timeline. Timeline. Okay. Now, now starts here, here, right at the this trim ends. Well, didn't. But my life, my life on earth, if this re represented to the timeline, line, my life, life, temporal life, life, this life, is actually at the edge of this. And all of that, that is the rest, rest of the timeline of how long I'm going to exist. I'm going to exist this way past that too. But if you were to try to take eternity, my eternity, where that starts over here at this trim, and we know it doesn't end, just for some example, this this kind of symbolizing the toward the like the part where we just just say, you know, it's not worth keeping keeping track of anymore because it's going to keep on going on going. This is we'll just say this 20 billion years from now. All right. What's that? If I took if I I don't have a beard here. I was gonna, I was going to say if I took her out of my beard, that would be pretty, that'd be something something, wouldn't it? Because I'm here right now. Uh, if I went back there and I snatched a beard out of brother James's or, or a hair out of brother James's beard. And I and I stuck it up up against trim. That's still longer than my my temporal life would last. Last in comparison to this whole timeline. And we make th th he's old beard now. We make things that are that are barely even able to be seen over here, compared to reality. It's barely even able to be seen. We make th these little things here here so. Oh, we're so to ourselves, aren't we? We. This is really not the important thing. What we do here, here needs to be in completely and to totally in relation to what, to, to this over, over here. Everything here is, is all, it should be all about this over here. In fact, if I were small enough to stand on that, in that trim, if I stepped off, off of it, I would already be, be in the future compared, compared to the time so small of a period of time it's it's like we're all all born ending on the edge of a cliff and the edge of the cliff is eternity and our entire life is just just that once we take off into eternity maybe cliff uh, you know <laughs> but you get the idea yeah the mindset of the rich much man as as described in the book of james is a mind, mindset mindset of one, of one who only cares cares about his life. The mind the mindset of the man is a mind, mindset of one one who thinks of heavenly things, and every, and everything life has to do with that. It's not necessarily about you know how how am I in the world for the for the next generation. No, there is an aspect of that how I'm preparing the next the next generation to think heavenly instead of earthly. But what mind are you going to have? Are you going to have fully mind or have mind? Will you be rich, rich or poor? I know that's a terrible thing to ask you. Right? Most people, most people you say, you want to be rich? Or do you want to be poor? I say, I want to be rich. Why? Because we're selfish. We want to be rich toward God, which means that we want to enrich others in a, a eternal aspect, a heavenly aspect, and that's the most important thing. 
I could give you all, all kind of applications, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, be doing. You guys know what you need to do. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and prayer and you can get to him to do it. Do it.